did open it just to make sure that it was here and in one piece, but I haven't pulled it out yet. Uh, it's double boxed, very nice, and then a very nice thick foam on top and around all four sides. So it's packaged very well. Uh, let's get it out of the box. It is a bit heavy, um, so yeah, uh, we'll get it out. All right, awesome packaging. Uh, first glance at everything, it doesn't look like there's any dents in it. Um, foam definitely protected it because there were a couple of scuffs on the box. Uh, and then it's also a hand wrap. Yeah, super, super well wrapped up. Aesthetic. Uh, came with a bag. All right, so uh, laying on top of everything, it came with a bag. And in that bag, uh, we've got a user manual, a USB cable, and two USB drives. I think one of them's got software on it. I'm not sure what the other one is. It looks like what your protective glasses would be made out of that. I'm not sure what it's for. Uh, measuring piece, I do believe. Not entirely sure. We'll figure out what that's for. Uh, some tape. Uh, this is going to be for your exhaust port. Uh, it does have a built-in fan on it. Probably grease. Yeah. Some kind of lubricant. I don't know. Not uh, it's not labeled, so I don't know what that is. And then a uh, power cable. I think everything else is inside of it. So let's open that up and see. Oh, awesome. Very good. Extra packaging. Yeah, two for the exhaust. Uh, it'll fit the right size. It's not going to fit our exhaust fan. There's a built-in one, but I think it's just like a little computer exhaust. So not that great. These are the hoses for the water cooling, as well as I believe this should be the pump. Yep. This is the pump. So this pumps water uh, into the laser tube to keep it cool. Looks like everything is covered with a nice protective film. Let's go to the back. So here's where we will. Yeah. Tubes are just stuck in and a little piece together. So these will go into distilled water. Always want to be distilled water into a bucket, and we will use that pump to water cool it. All right. So smoke outlet. Like I said, just a little. It looks like a computer fan. We'll probably build something to connect into our bigger hose with our exhaust that we have. Water in and out. Water pump hookup. I'm assuming, uh, and we'll look through the instructions, but you plug it here and then it'll turn on the pump when you turn on the machine. Grounding wire jacket. Again, I don't think we need this because we are grounding through here, but I will read and see on that. This panel is screwed. All right, here is the tube. Looks like it's taped up, so that'll need to come off, and I don't think it's plugged in. That'll be an instruction, don't plug it in. You can see right here where the tubes are going to come in and they're going to flow and they're going to fill all of this up with water to keep that part cool. Now, a lot of these machines I've seen people put in bigger tubes and they end up having to cut this part out. This one actually comes with a panel that you can take off that's going to accommodate that if you go with a bigger tube. Now, let's check out the control panel. Same situation, it is very shut. All right, so we have got temperature LCD display power, temperature LD, LCD display water, it's probably water temperature and tube temperature, emergency stop, uh, laser switch, another laser switch, I don't know what that means, on and off button, laser test switch. And these, I believe, are just power increments to turn the laser power up and down. On and off, and let's see what's inside. It's very minimalistic. The main control board is right here. Looks like an M2 Nano. Uh, power supply, everything. Very common setup. Here's a USB cord uh, that we would plug in for the computer. Nice that it's a separate panel, so we can pull that out and do anything we need to. I did notice, and this is really cool, is that this has a kill switch. So I'm guessing the laser will not run with the door open. Great safety option there. Oh, and there is an LED strip here for the light. Don't see where we can turn it on and off? So it's probably just on when we plug it in, or when we turn on the machine. All right, I took the panel off because the film goes out at the end. I don't want to have part of it still on, just four little bolts. Not bolts, just four nuts holding that on. All right, there's a super satisfying peel. Peeled off everything on the inside, went through the connections. We'll put this back on. Cool. Okay, first thing they say to do in the manual is that we're going to make sure the emergency stop button works correctly. So it comes to press, you've got to twist it to turn it off so that you can turn the machine on. So first thing they say to do is to make sure and get the water pump going and filling up the tube before we actually fire the laser. And then we're going to test the emergency stop button. I've got the water pump plugged straight in. Zero out worked great. Looks like the pump is running. Pump is definitely running. Awesome. Let's take a look at the tube, make sure that it is full. Looks like we're pretty good on water. There's a few air bubbles. Now let's go back and do a test hit. All right, we've got a scrap piece in here. The exhaust fan is on. It pulls decent, but we went ahead and fed it into our good exhaust fan. So we've got that. Now what the machine says to do first is to test the laser by turning it on and then immediate, and then hitting the emergency stop and watching the laser to make sure it goes off immediately. Okay, so we're going to hit the laser test switch and we get laser. So it's on while holding it. Boom. So what I did is I held the laser test switch button while it's on and then hit the emergency shutoff to make sure it killed the laser immediately. And it did. So we're good on that. Now we can turn it back on, get it plugged in the computer, and actually test the machine. So the dongles that came with had software on it. I went with K40 Whisperer after looking a bit. It's what I want to try first. So I got it loaded up on the computer. It is connected to the machine. So when I homed it, it worked. So I think we're good. I'm going to run the first test with you guys on here because I don't know what it's going to do. I exported a file out of Lightburn in SVG. And it's just our normal power scale. And I'm going to run raster and grave at 100 millimeters a second. And I'm going to keep my hand close to the emergency stop button because, like I said, I'm not exactly sure what it's going to do. So, let's uh, let's watch and see. 
right? As you saw there, going from top down didn't work because most of that is white, and it's also on top of the vent. So we're losing a little bit uh, because of that vent in there. Now, that's something I do want to remove later and get that extra space back to engrave on, but not right now. I moved the homing to the bottom left corner of that, and we're going to try again. Okay, so what I did is I edited down the picture, got rid of the white on the top. I didn't forget to mention I'm going to run this at 20% to start because I don't know exactly what it's going to do, so I want it a little bit low. So now we are good to run this. I moved it farther down so it'll be in the middle of the wood, hopefully, and uh, let's run it again. All right, so here it is finished. You can see at 20%, it cuts in pretty deep. Um, I also did this very specifically because I wanted to show you the capabilities of a uh, the software that comes with these machines. It cannot change power in the middle of it like uh, you would do with Lightburn. So this is all the same percentage and everything. Now, it will grayscale, so as the picture is darker, it ends up going, going deeper, but it will not change percentages based on settings like Lightburn. So like I said, that was 20%, 100 millimeters a second. So that works out to about 6,000 millimeters a minute, and we would typically run the ortho at 3,000. So it's going twice as fast as what we would do with the dioid laser, and uh, so it just can't cut with light burn yet. That's an upgrade we could do in the future. Uh, we haven't decided exactly what all we're going to do, but we're definitely going to test it out a little bit more like this before we start tearing it apart. All right, there is our first test cut, and wow, is it awesome. Um, super excited uh, to get into the CO2 world. Um, haven't even cut on it yet, but it's going to cut so much better. We've got a lot of things planned for uh, this laser. It is a $500 entry, just about the same as any of the K40s. They're all right in that same range. Um, really love this one so far. I uh, do want to put it up against about what $500 would be on a diode laser to see the differences, what it can do, what it can't do, and uh, which one we would recommend. Uh,